next talk is um, experiences as entrepreneur over 30 years by Shri S. Kailas Nathan, who is uh, a graduate in electrical engineering from here, from 1973 batch. So it's my pleasure to introduce the speaker. After graduating from IIT Madras, he joined IIM Kolkata and graduated in 1975. Post IIM, he worked in a public sector company called Electronics Trade and Technology Development Corporation Limited from 1975 to 1981 as assistant manager computers and later as manager computers. Later, he started Microsense Private Limited along with co-founder Rajiv Talwar in 1982 and started designing and manufacturing computers. The company moved to data communications in 1987 and has been in this domain ever since. So Microsense companies work in the areas of wireless and communication services. The group companies include Microsense Private Limited, Microsense Networks Private Limited, a systems integration company, Microsense FZD, which is uh, UAE, and Microsense LLC USA, and Microsoft, Microsense Software Private Limited. So with this introduction, I would like to now welcome the speaker to give his talk. Good evening, everybody. I am deeply thankful to the Alumni Association and the Office of the Alumni Affairs for having given this opportunity to address all of you. It is indeed a great honor for me. Like uh, many in the audience, I had the privilege of being a student at this August uh, Institute. I now have the privilege of sharing with you, like the introducer told you, my experience as an entrepreneur for over 30 years. Many things have changed since 1973. In those days, as a student, we used to use a slide rule. We had no calculators, we had no computers, and of course, we had no internet. In fact, uh, a computer was uh, introduced into the institute the year after I graduated. Myself uh, and um, Rajiv Talwar, an alumnus of IIT Delhi and I am Calcutta like me, co-founded this company Microsense way back in 1983. We, as you can see, it's about, we stayed together for, been together for more than 30 years and it's a, a rare kind of uh, accomplishment and uh, it's a special relationship. In early 1980s, 81, 82, a relatively unknown company called Apple Computers wanted to appoint a distributor for India and we stumbled on this opportunity and we looked at this possibility. We, had, we were both working in our own respective companies at that time. We had to turn Apple computers down because it was impossible to import those computers and distribute them in India, even though it may have been possible to buy them on Ritchie Street. In any case, once we thought of this uh, idea of uh, computers, we decided to make our own computers and uh, thus was formed Microsense Private Limited. It took us about a year and a half to come out with our computers. They were initially 8-bit computers and later they were IBM PC compatibles. Our competitors then were people like Wipro and HCL. We were able to hold our own against uh, these biggies even though we were a relatively small company. Our customers were all the big corporates like uh, both private sector and public sector, Hindustan Lever, Britannia, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, Bharat AV Electrical Limited and so on and so forth. We were also approved by the Indian Banks Association to 
supply what we call as the advanced ledger posting machines to the banks, which was nothing but uh, computers renamed as something else, because in those days computers were not um, considered, you know, good for for the banks and they, because of the union and so on. But in any case, we were supplying large numbers of computers to the banks as well. So we had a successful operation uh, making computers. That was uh, in the early to mid-1980s. Somewhere down the line, we took a corporate decision to discontinue making computers. One. While when we started, we were designing our own computers and was in some sense a high technology operation. As time passed by, um, it was no more that. You either had to be a very large company, at least we felt so, or you had to be a grey market operator to succeed because many you know, by the time IBM PC compatibles were very much in force and uh, PCBs were just getting imported and people were assembling them and selling them and we thought that's not the place to be in. Instead, we, we felt that um, there was a great scope instead of standalone computers to get the computers connected because the very same companies were wanting to move information from one office to another office, from the regional office to the headquarters and so on. So we entered into the area of uh, wide area communication and we have been in that area ever since. Again, our customers were all the big companies like uh, again, Hindu Sun Lever had uh, offices and dealerships and stockists all over the country and they needed these to be connected and we were there. For many years, we were the people who were providing wide area network connectivity to the entire ITC group using uh, VSATs, using modems, using X.25 links and so on and so forth. The competition was uh, relatively limited because we were early players in the game. This is before the time of the internet, which changed uh, the whole world, including India. So, internet was commercially introduced in India in August of, 15th of August, 1995. Prior to that, uh, an organization called ERNet, Educational Research Network, was uh, able to bring internet to educational institutions, I would presume including IIT Madras. We were already supplying large numbers of modems to this ER net. But the internet was introduced commercially by an organization called VSNL, Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited, which then was a 100 percent government owned company. And it uh, offered internet to anyone who wanted to buy. We had applied for and we were selected as agents of VSNL and we were appointed as agents of VSNL in September 1995. It uh, fitted in very well with our data communications background and uh, we soon became the largest agents of, uh, micro of, of uh, VSNL. We were uh, getting uh, internet orders from all over India, from Tiruchi, Madurai, Trivandrum, of course all the metros, from individuals, from companies. Practically demand drafts would flow into our various offices. And uh, like I said, we, we were able to fulfill all these orders along with our modem supplies and our uh, customer orientation stood as apart from anybody else including VSNL because in VSNL you had to stand in a queue and maybe pay the money 
and get registered and then later you would get the internet connection and then afterwards there used to be other problems. Of course, for several years VSNL was a monopoly till the internet was opened up to private players and more private players came into play and then VSNL, the internet itself become, became a commodity item and modems by then had become pretty much a commodity item. But we were um, able to use the connectivity solutions that we were offering. We were uh, interconnecting offices, we had uh, supplying lease lines and lease line modems and um, any all the other connectivity that the internet brought in. So that is uh, basically some of the path, but right now what are we doing? We are a technology service provider to premium hotels. By technology service provider I mean Wi-Fi, internet, TV, IPTV, smart rooms, in-building solutions which would bring in cellular connectivity within the building and so on. So far as Wi-Fi is concerned, our market share in the premium 5 star and above hotels is all India more than 50 percent. If you take Chennai in the same segment, our market share is 80 percent. We are providing service to all the Taj hotels um, in Chennai, there are I think 5, 6 of them, Coromandel, Connemara, Fisherman's Cove, Mount Road, OMR and so on, the ITC Grand Chola, the old Chola, the old Park Sheraton which is now called the Crown Plaza, the Radisson on Mount Road, the Trident on um, the Airport Road which is an Oberoi Hotel, the Hyatt Regency. So you can see from this that you know we have a um, very strong hold in this uh, place. That is one place that we are working in, in the hospitality segment. We got into the hospitality segment when we were doing internet services. We offered um, the third group of hotels that their guests could access the internet from their rooms. That was uh, way back in 1997 when the laptops did not have an Ethernet port, they did not have Wi-Fi and it was a big hit. They gave us the order for another 16 hotels. That is how we started and then in 19, in the year 2000, we started uh, providing Wi-Fi services in these, in these hotels. We have formed a company called Microsense Networks LLC in the US to address the similar kind of requirements over there. That is because the technology solution, a lot of technology involved, software is also involved and processes are involved are uh, considered the best among the among the world. Even in even in India our main competitors are a company called Intertouch Docomo which is uh, part of the big giant called Docomo and the other big second big competitor is a company called Guest Tech which is the, the biggest service provider to the hospitality industry in the USA and in fact the whole world. They are uh, so recently we got approved by Hyatt um, after uh, evaluation by the headquarters in Chicago and they were kind enough to rate our services among the best in the world. So that is what I mean by saying that what we provide is um, a lot of technology involved in that and that is considered among the best in the world. We also have a company in the UAE called Microsense FZD. We have another company in India called MiFi Networks Provider Limited which makes access points 
routers, gateways, all related to the Wi-Fi industry. Over the years, we have uh, provided Wi-Fi in airports, townships, coffee shops, name them, we have done this over the years. There is not much uh, revenue still being generated in these kind of locations, whereas there is a generic need for hotels and uh, some other places. We are also uh, providing internet services more recently in the last year or so to residential complexes because it is very similar to what we are doing in hotels. So big residential blocks, Mohendra, Life City, Seabros, a number of them, um, they lack our services, we know how to provide them. So that is how it is. Of course, during the all this period, we have had many challenges to be able to provide this service in the face of competition from, you know, you can imagine uh, Airtel or Idea or any of the telephone companies, Reliance earlier, now we have Reliance Geo coming up for saying they are going to set up 1 million hotspots in the next 6 or 7 months. There was a time when the entire city of Chennai was plastered by Dishnet saying that they are going to, with advertisements and hoardings, saying that they would set up uh, hotspots. There have been other companies like Tikona who have got into this game and so, but we have been able to manage most of this uh, competition. Now, over the period of time now, uh, these are the experiences, what we do now, the thing is that uh, there are certain lessons perhaps we may have learnt during these operations, which can differ, which can differ for various people, but some of them are basic realities. One is business ethics. We have steered clear of any kind of non-lawful activity. We have paid all our taxes. We felt this was a better way to go than to buy problems or headaches. When we started way back in 1983, we had taken a term loan from a company called APSFC. We started our unit in Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh State Financial Corporation. They had sanctioned us a term loan of about 20 lakhs. It took a long time to sanction this. We used only part, part of it and then we returned the balance money. So they were extremely surprised that such a company exists because uh, the usual practice then was probably to, you know, inflate the bills and so on. So one is that two, two aspects come in that you play a clean game and the second is uh, don't borrow more money than is needed or borrow money when it is needed, not at other times. Over the years, every single year our company has made profit. We are a completely debt free company and we have remained a closely held and debt free company all these many years. So there is this uh, issue of uh, scaling up of this company. We are quite comfortable with the size we are. We are not. We are not. A, we do not. We have no ambitions to be a Reliance. You or we never tried. But we have a healthy um, company which is making profit, and we are able to invest in um, new advancements. We are um, as a, then the other is giving back. So we have recently set up um, Wi-Fi two villages in Tanjavur district, which happen to be the um, ancestor villages of two of India's Nobel laureates. Both are coming from the same village. So we hope to extend that giving back from two villages to maybe 200 villages and then see further how we, how we go. The other thing that uh, we have been 
successful is retaining our people, which means that um, motivation of people who work with you and um, as a company considering the industry that we are in, our uh, turnover is extremely low. Many of our people have been working with us for long periods of time, 10 years, 15 years and so on. They are all young people, correct? Third is, we would we, 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 we like to work with young graduates who come with new ideas, um, breakthrough ideas. We are also funding startup companies. We have, a, we have funded a company called Let's Math XYZ, which is, which is a educational, online education um, enterprise, which is um, in its first year of operation, we are very happy with the pro we are very happy with the progress it is making, and um, these are these are these are the things that um, we are doing. So this uh, this brings me to the end of my talk, and this is about 30 years compressed in less than 30 minutes. So, any if you have any questions, you are most welcome to shoot them and I will be happy to answer. Good evening, sir. I am Chetan. Sir, uh, I have this question. Um, I, I w were you able to expect that uh, you are going to end up in uh, Wi-Fi services? Because once you started, you started in uh, manufacturing computers. Then you got into something very specific, Wi-Fi technology, uh, providing Wi-Fi technology to hotels. So, were you, uh, were you able to uh, expect that you will go into such a narrow segment? Did you prepare or uh, is it something like you identified a need and then uh, went ahead to uh, satisfy the demand? Well, like I told you, we started manufacturing computers. That was a very successful operation we were doing, but we still desired to get out of it and get into data communications, which was connecting computers over long distances. But I must share with you that before we started our thing going, we had, we had, we had to struggle a lot in this gap period of a year or two. We were doing very many things to keep things going. We were uh, making, um, which is also successful, we were making uh, Indian language software and um, including uh, Mr. P. V. Narasavarao is a user of uh, the software and he was also a user for computers um, and we were selling fax machines. But we had a basic game plan to move into connectivity. But you know the Wi-Fi, this we did in the year 1987, 88, 89. Wi-Fi was invented in the year 2000. So, there was no Wi-Fi at that time, but there was connectivity and we got into Wi-Fi because we were in, we were uh, providing connectivity solutions to the hotel and hotels were one of the first adopters of Wi-Fi. That's how we got into. So, we didn't plan Wi-Fi when we were left computers, but that was sort of, uh, that's the pro pro way we progressed towards this. Hello. Yeah, my name is Sai Kumar and uh, my question is along the same wavelength as the earlier question. Uh, what, what are you doing about research and what percent of your, of your budget is dedicated to research, if at all? Well, we have a lot of focus on research because uh, right from the time we were making computers, when we were selling computers, for example, we couldn't move them as boxes because uh, we had to add value to them, either as uh, software or whatever it may be. And then again, when we got into modems, even in modems, we used to supply to, for example, software along with uh, the modems, which means that, um, you know, these computer, these modems would wake up in the night where the STD charges were the lowest and they would send, um, files from one region to the other and again 
when we got into these hotels and Wi-Fi and all that, it's all backed by a huge amount of software and development. Or if we take, take this IPTV that we are doing, huge amount of uh, R&D is involved. Um, practically our entire, uh, leaving out the sales force, correct, and the support force, the entire workforce in our company is devoted to R&D and whatever they need, they get in order to, you know, any infrastructure, any equipment, anything that is needed, it's all bought. So, a lot of, lot of attention is to pay to, pay to R&D and that's a very important component of our, for our success as a matter of fact. Oh, hello sir, I'm Srinivasan. Um, so, you have had experience with making hardware in the beginning and then moved into the services with the hardware uh, component for all these uh, business, business to business kind of thing. So, at this current scenario, you have seen like uh, pre-internet era and then you got into the internet era where there was Wi-Fi and you have also seen telecommunications get through. So, what was your reasons not to go into the public domain like uh, where you make products which go to the uh, end users directly than target businesses? Uh, I would like to know about that. And given a choice, would you actually, will you actually try to make hardware again? Because all these companies are now like, there are a lot of companies which boom into the hardware like they try to make uh, phones. So, when technology changed, they have actually got into it and you have had experience. Why did you choose not to do that? Well, um, the only place where we are expecting to go directly to the end users is the residential segment, where also we are actually targeting the buildings and then making the service attractive to the people who live in those buildings. and. Uh, you know, so it's not that we are we are addressing um, a, a huge number of people all over all over India to come and buy something from us. They they see that this service is available in their building and they buy it. So each is a pocket. Just like um, we sell to the hotels, and the hotels sell to the. So even though we are not selling, we have to sell to the building uh, association or whatever it may be. But uh, once that is done, we also have to sell to the end user, unless, unlike in a hotel where the hotel sells to the ultimate user. I do not see ourselves going too much beyond this into the consumer area. Of course, hot spots is another area, but when we provide that hot spot, again we are talking to the location owner, correct? And then we expect that the hotspot final user will always use it for free. So there is nothing that we are selling it to him. There is a location, there is a Wi-Fi available there. He is using it or she is using it. And our sales is really to the location or not to the end user. And we don't see ourselves uh, manufacturing uh, anything beyond a point. We may outsource some assembly work. Even the Wi-Fi access points, we assemble Wi-Fi access points. But uh, our strength really is in adding software to those Wi-Fi access points and making the differentiator of these vis-a-vis -vis the other vendors. Check. Yeah. Sir, uh, I remember you had mentioned that uh, you, uh, you happen to control 80% uh, of the market share in Chennai. So, could you just share with us a story? Uh, uh, regarding uh, any stiff competition you had with your rivals and uh, how, what strategy you implied to overcome it? Well, um, the competition comes from different categories of competitors. One, two of them I mentioned to you, which is, which are actually foreign companies. One is Intertouch to Como, which is a uh, part of a global, of, of a Japanese conglomerate which is a huge company. The other is Guest Tech which is in fact pro biggest provider of the services if you look at it globally. But compared to them we are number one, they are number two and number three. There are other kinds of competitors who come in. Um, for example, um, you can have simple system integrators. They can say I can put these access points here and you get everything to everything together, so bring it down to a commodity level. So that's one kind of uh, of, a, of a competitor. Another kind of a competitor is actually Indian companies like us. You know, there are a few examples who put in the effort and 
deliver the service to these people. What differentiates us from them is the R&D that uh, Mr. Sai Kumar was talking about. Because they put in so much R&D, these Indian companies cannot really compete with us, whereas the other guys, the foreign companies, can. Then you have a third category, another category of uh, competitors, which is the telcos, because they want to be everywhere. The Airtels and the Ideas and the Aircells, they want to Vodafones, they want to get in everywhere, the Tatas. I may share with you that um, in the early days after we, we, we got the Taj contract and we were providing good service and all that, the Tatas got into this Wi-Fi business. They still have a Wi-Fi business. But they are uh, probably having maybe 5% of, of what we do, let's say. And uh, the Tatas, as you know, the Taj group is a Tata-owned group. And the Tata Communication Limited, Tata Teleservices Limited, were also Tata. And uh, the Taj group actually gave several properties after having promised it to us, their new properties. They acquired uh, Taj Lands and it was for something else earlier it was called, they bought this major hotel and uh, they asked us to do, but before we could start they gave it to Tata Communications Limited. Then they had a service apartment called Taj Wellington Muse, which is also, you know, a super premium kind of place. That also they gave it to Tata's. And they gave five, six hotels in uh, Goa or not five, six, maybe two, three, and one in Kerala called Taj Malabar, which is still with the Tatas. But um, if you ask now, Taj doesn't want to touch Tata with a barge pole. So what, what is the difference? The difference is that we have a customer orientation. We have a flexibility of operation. We are saying what do they need and we provide them that. But if you go into the Tatas or any of the other service providers, you would go into a lab, labyrinthine kind of process by which they would never get the job done. So these are the competitors and this is uh, how it is done. The other thing is that um, when you provide the service, you also need to be an ISP. You have to be an internet service provider. You cannot be a non-ISP. You have to we have to adhere to legal norms, for example, lawful intercept, because, you know, at various times, the, uh, for example, the Taj Mahal Mumbai was attacked by terrorists. So we had to share information of all kinds of uh, things about how the internet was used prior to that. As you must have heard, there were, there were all kinds of things, people are using VoIP and so on and so forth and things were so we have to share all that data. We, from time to time we get, um, you know, the crime branch coming and asking us some detail. Now we cannot share it with other people. We cannot even share it with the hotel. We cannot share it even with ourselves. It has be, it's be vaulted. We have to only produce it when the legal authorities ask. So if you have a non-ISP doing this, either he must collect this information, in which case they don't have the authority to collect the information or they will not be collecting the information, in which case also they run a full a fall of the law. So you need to have a basic uh, this in combination. So that's how we've been managing. I can't say that it will happen forever in the future, but you know, there's always hope. Uh, hello, uh, sir, this is Suraman. Uh, how do you see the growth of uh, mobile industry? Can you repeat your question? The growth of uh, mobile mobile phone industry in India, lot of imported uh, uh, mobiles like… Uh, oh, the phones, mobile, uh, the phones. phones yes. Now, before the phones, you know, everybody is extremely happy of how the mobile industry has so far been firing in India. Lots of people have taken credit for it, including Mr. Raja, as you know. So, um, there has been a phenomenal growth. You see, you see that it has changed the way 
um, changed India itself, correct? So that's for voice connectivity. The next phase, they are talking about smartphones, and we have uh, you know the Reliant Geo, which is going to make uh, the data connectivity even cheaper than it is now, or it will going to be cheapest in the world. So all these look like um, good, good. I mean, even though the markets have tanked uh, yesterday, day four, my own personal take on this, all of them will do well going into the future. The phone manufacturers, it depends, you know, they are just uh, pushing uh, the instruments. So, if the number of people um, taking the service is high and I can't say which one will, which one is better or which phone is worse, in which phone manufacturer will succeed, in which phone manufacturer will not succeed, that's all difficult things to say. But overall there is going to be, there is going to be growth and particularly for the uh, telephone companies. This is kind of off the wall. Uh, it's clear that you are, uh, you're a prob you're a problem solver of considerable strength and that you have solved many problems and the problem that I want to address is the kind of problem that people like me face, that uh, the, uh, the, the computer can do so many things to improve the standard of living of people with disabilities, with either visual or uh, hearing or, or speech or whatever. And so, so, so I want to know if there's any Anything that you have been working on about uh, make, using the computer for people to help people conquer some of the, the, the problems they face because of disabilities they may have. Yeah, the answer, simple answer to that is have we done anything? No. But I can give you an example of how this is, which is that this uh, friend of mine he came back from the U.S. and he said, I've been using this phone in the U.S. He is uh, mostly blind. He can't see. So he had a phone, LG phone actually, and uh, it could do a lot of things for him. It would speak to him. It would tell him which numbers he's dialing and so on and so forth. He said, can you do? And then I did some R&D and I said, you know, right now in India there is no such phone available. Then a few days ago he said he was able to get because his problem was that his phone was locked. It would only work with the SIM which is working in the US, which he didn't want to do. But he was able to get a phone with um, with the SIM unlocked, so he could use an Indian SIM and he could he could get on with his life. So this is a real example of how a phone can help. And I'm sure we are we are we have not so far not done, done anything. And this is something maybe we can think about. But certainly the potential for helping human beings with technology is very much there because uh, it gets uh, more and more easier to, more and more um, interfaces are there, cameras are there, um, speakers are there, all kinds of technologies such as speech recognition is there, everything is growing up. I'm sure that um, the human race is going to benefit by technology including and there will be such uh, developments. But is our company doing anything right now? The answer is no. So, uh, to just finish, like, like you would have seen me trying to get in here. Even a place like IIT is, uh, is, is really ill-equipped to uh, you know, help people who are on, who are on wheelchairs. So it's it's I agree. I mean, uh, uh, India is uh, probably one of the worst equipped places. It's really pathetic. Pathetic uh, indeed. Uh, you, like you said, even in IIT, you have to go back somewhere and then I don't know how you came finally. Uh, it's pathetic and um, at least you had some way of getting in here. But uh, let's take, uh, I saw some pictures of some train compartments which are going to help the not so mobile and uh, but uh, all in all anywhere you get buses trains even um, aeroplanes it's you'll have to depend on other people to do this 
it's it's a big issue and uh, prime minister modi has been talking about you heard him talk from time to time but what exactly is happening i don't know but it's something that we need to do as a country so uh, let me just conclude with the Prime Minister Modi has been talking for a long time, but uh, one hasn't been seeing anything coming out of it. So my request to you, as a person who is obviously a, a problem solver and who, who, who really knows how to get things done, I would like you to, to devote some of your faculties to trying to attack this problem. And certainly, I, I promise you that I will look into it and I will get back to you on the subject. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thank, I thank Sri S. Kailas Nathan for his uh, wonderful lecture. Uh, now I invite uh, uh, Sri S. Kailas Nathan's uh, batchmates to give him a token of gratitude from our side. of this company. He's from IIT Delhi and I am Calcutta.